One phrase that I use a lot is beyond reasonable doubt because we've got to deliver all of those details beyond reasonable doubt to the examiner and I'm going to show you how to do that and how by just some simple movements and simple tweaks to what you're doing you can achieve the best possible marks in these exams. Hi there, that was Slinky from Easy Jazzy Tudes by Mark Nightingale. I want to use that piece just to explain a couple of tips for you to help you get through music exams. Whatever level exam you're doing, all the way from debut grades, all the way up to university and conservatoire final exams, it's the same tips and the same little bits of advice. First thing we've got to remember about exams is we've got to understand what the job spec is. What is the task that we have to deliver. So we've got to demonstrate that we know the tune, we understand all the markings on there, we know it beyond reasonable doubt, we're playing our instrument at the correct level with the good sound, a good tuning and everything being accurate. That's what we're looking for. The job spec is to deliver all of those details beyond reasonable doubt. <clears throat> There's three key elements to getting a piece correct. The first one is the correct notes, the correct rhythms and the details. Now I think if we treat that as a triangle, we have notes up here, we've got rhythm down here, and we've got details over here, it's kind of the wrong way around. I think what we need to do is we need to flip the details onto the top. We need to get the notes correct and everything else and the rhythm correct, but we've got to understand that without the details, those two things don't form a triangle. We've got to get that perfect triangle to deliver and convey exactly what the composer, in the case of Slinky, Mark Nightingale, was looking for when he wrote the piece of music. So if I take the first phrase of Slinky, I've got all the details in there, I've got the correct rhythm and I've got the correct notes. Um, the details being on the two uh, D sharps, we've got a staccato and a tenuto, so we've got I've got that little effect in there. So that was an accurate triangular performance with everything correct, the triangle, the perfect shape. So if I take and this is my point to, to say to you that missing the details is as bad as playing the wrong notes. So if I take the correct details and the correct rhythm but the wrong notes, that's just as bad as missing the details. So missing the details, if I've got the right rhythm and the right notes, it's as bad as playing all them wrong notes before. Same with the rhythm, you've got to have all three of them elements correct and demonstrate them beyond reasonable doubt to the examiner to get the message across that the composer is trying to convey. Let's listen to two performances of this piece. Okay, so when we go into the marking of this piece then, that performance, straight away uh, we're going to have a look at the melodic accuracy and intonation, which basically means was it the right notes and did you play it in tune? Yeah, the right notes were there, maybe a couple of blips, maybe a couple of notes not quite centred, but I don't think everything, anything was that obvious. So, you know, performance wise, on that element that was pretty good, that was okay. Rhythmic wise as well, that was fine. Tempo and flow, was it the correct tempo? Now we are marked at 96 beats a minute, which is a little bit slower than I think what I was playing there. I think I was just pushing things through, which is gonna happen with nerves, but the way that I'm kind of being light about that is probably how an examiner's gonna be, and be like, yeah, it, it was rushing a bit, but he's probably nervous. So that's one of them things that kind of would be okay. So if I'm gonna look for a prefer perfect performance, I'm gonna need to just pull that tempo back a little tiny bit. Um, and then the dynamics and details. Well, I established my first volume. Now, my first volume here is marked mezzo forte. But then at the end of that first line, it's marked piano. Did I show the difference, beyond reasonable doubt, between mezzo forte here, mezzo piano, and then piano down here? Did I show that scale difference? Did I, once I established the volume and the volume range, 
and did I show the piano? In the third line down, did I go back up to mezzo forte? Was that mezzo forte exactly the same volume as the starting mezzo forte? Again, at the end of that line, it goes back down to piano. Did I demonstrate that piano beyond reasonable doubt? Did I demonstrate the crescendo at the end? Maybe a slight crescendo, but I, th I can't definitively say, I cannot sit and say, yes, I did that crescendo, it was definitely there, which means the examiner's not going to do that as well. So, how to hack the examiner's brain. I'm going to give you a performance of it now, and then I'm going to explain what I've done to get this to be an exam ready, and hopefully an exam perfect performance of Slinky. <laughs> So there, we go back to all these elements, and everything was ticked at that point. So I'm quite happy that I delivered good melodic accuracy and intonation, I delivered good rhythm. Tempo and flow, again, I didn't pull it back as far as I maybe could, but for me that piece flows at that tempo. Dynamics and details, I demonstrate that beyond reasonable doubt, and I'll show you what I did. I didn't just play them, I also demonstrated them as well, because there's a third element. Not only do we have to hear them, We've also got to see them as well. So if the examiner sees us moving in a way that demonstrates loud and quiet, he will then definitively know that we have done and delivered those details and we understand what they mean beyond reasonable doubt. So, <clears throat> how do I demonstrate the volumes? Well, simply take a picture, okay? Here we are, this is a trumpet player playing loud. If I go bright red in the face and I'm like, that's a trumpet player playing loud and leaning back slightly, probably high as well. If I want to see a picture of a trumpet player playing quietly, I'm going to be to the side. I'm not going to have my instrument directed straight in the examiner's face, and that suggests quiet. If I want to suggest a crescendo, I just bring my instrument up. I don't have to move about and dance about while I'm playing and do all that kind of stuff. That can be really mega distracting. But what I am doing is I'm playing with the examiner's mind. I'm hacking into his brain and saying, look, I am playing loud. Not only can you hear that I'm playing loud, but you can see I'm playing loud. Oh, I'm playing quiet now. So you can really, really get volumes across. And actually, I hate to say, but you don't need to do that much contrast in volume when you're just using this very small area that's literally about that big to play your instrument in. Now, if you want to do something more obvious and bigger, that's, you know, that's the way to do it. It's all about your personality and how much you move. I personally don't want to be dancing about and moving about, but that is one way to get the, the, the examiner really thinking and knowing that you understand everything that he's asking you to do. So preparation for the exam. When I'm preparing students for exams, I've been doing this for about 20 years now and hundreds of exams, absolutely hundreds. And there's no examiner who is worse and more critical than me. And that's my role as an instructor, as a coach, is to basically make sure that my students are super prepared and they're gonna understand what exactly the exam is looking for and how to deliver it. So we make sure, first of all, listen to different performances of the piece and then examine it yourself. Ask yourself, did that person play mezzo forte? And it, it doesn't matter whether it's one of the world's greatest brass players who's playing it. They're still probably going to miss details out and it's still probably, you're going to find areas where you can go, Actually, well, I didn't really hear that staccato and tenuto that's on the piece there. I thought that he was stood in the stand too much and I didn't see the details. You know, you, you start to hone into these details and you know, it does become a kind of obsession where you, you will listen to a lot of performances and it, even with some exam pieces, you hear demo recordings of them. They're just wrong. They're, you, you know, you wouldn't mark, you, you wouldn't give them 10 out of 10, you'd be like 6, 7 out of 10. Because all of the details that the marking you want start to pull other things down. So if I'm playing, missing details out, I'm not catching the mood and character of the piece. You know, and that's probably affecting my tuning. It's probably affecting different things. So there's all these different aspects to you know, to performance that have to be right. And if you start really listening to the piece over and over and listening to different performances, which is easy to do, it will really, really help you. Also utilize some of your tech, record yourself, video record yourself. Now, it is useful to be able to see it. It's embarrassing and you sit and you laugh at yourself and you go, oh, I look terrible when I do that. Get past that, get past that really quickly because what you're looking for is the bare bones of what we're doing. We're looking for, are we playing by, you know, 
showing our dynamics, are we, do we look right, are we hiding behind the music stand, is it a good performance to watch? You know, that's what we've got to look at. So you record yourself and keep a diary of it, keep a track of it. You know, it doesn't just have to be audio as well, but make sure that all your details are there and mark them. You know, mark yourself, get used to criticizing yourself, marking yourself and looking for the areas where you can improve that and get it better and better. It is so easy to do these days. It was terrible when I was growing up and when I was a kid, you couldn't physically record yourself because video cameras cost an absolute fortune back then. Um, whereas now everyone's got a phone in the pocket, which is just the ultimate tool for self coaching and self developing. You know, it's just so useful to do that and to actually just get over the self embarrassment and just go for it. One of the other little tools which is great for also for recording yourself, record yourself playing the piece through with the music as you would perform it in the exam. But also try recording it and learning it from memory so that you know the piece beyond reasonable doubt. So that when nerves kick in, it's almost a natural reaction and response that you're just going to play it correct anyway. So knowing the piece so well that you don't need the music is critical. Now, I've been teaching Slinky for a long time. Um, I don't know how well I know it, but I'm going to put myself to the test and I'm going to see if I can play it without the music. Now, you can't see on the camera, but the music is kind of just on an iPad sat just there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to blindfold myself and try and play Slinky. So there's some places in the second half there, third line down, that I don't know, but you know, I'm not doing this for an exam tomorrow, but if I was, I know where I would be practicing. So that's really highlighted to me the little areas that I need to look at. But one thing that does do, playing from memory and playing blindfold, is it actually frees you up to perform. And playing blindfold is actually really good because it does shut everything down, it forces you to shut your eyes, forces you to know the music, but it does help you perform and it does help you get out of the kind of self-conscious thing. Um, and it is a really useful little tip to take away from this video. The day of the exam has come. You probably didn't sleep very well the night before. What I would say is a couple of days before the exam, I would maybe use two days before the exam as what I would call a conditioning day. So that means, you know, playing long notes on the instrument, you know, just going through long notes, low notes, just get all the blood flowing to the lips and things like that. The day before the exam, don't play. Leave the instrument in the case. Don't think about the exam. Just take a, take a brain break so that you're fresh and ready for it on the day. Make sure you look professional. Make sure you look the part. You know, obviously, for a lot of people, exams are in school and things so you know make sure you've got your school uniform on but make sure it's fresh it's clean you're looking smart you know you don't look in absolute state like you've just been out playing football and then you've come running in and that's you in the exam ready to go make sure you look professional remember that nerves are normal they help you focus it's a normal process it's a normal thing that's going to happen the problem is that our brain can't differentiate between a saber-toothed tiger and us being a caveman and an examiner who Sometimes you are saber-toothed tigers, I've got to say. Um, but you've just got to take it nice and steady. The examiner wants to hear a good performance. That's what he wants to do. He, he's got a really lucky job. He gets to travel all over the place. And he gets to go and eat in posh restaurants and stuff like that. And then he gets to sit and listen to you guys delivering nice pieces of music that he's enjoying. And that he's hearing lots of different versions of. And he just has to write about it. And then hopefully give you an absolutely fantastic mark and make your day directly before the exam. Now, one of the problems is, is the frantic last minute practice. Do not get into the habit of looking at the tricky bit. You know, you'll just compound it in your own mind. You'll just panic about it. You'll just get worse and worse. And also the examiner might hear that tricky bit and have it locked in his brain and go, I'm gonna listen out for that when they come in the exam because that's obviously a tricky area. They don't know that very well. That's what we've got to try and get away from, is not giving him any clues. We've got to show him that we know the music really well. We know all the little corners of it, and we've practiced it, and we've put our effort and time into it, because that's what he wants to see. He wants to see that you've put the effort in, and that you care about this exam. 
Some accompanists do spend hours and hours and hours rehearsing and things like that and trying to go over it with you and like let's run the whole program just get used to topping and tailing start off you know if there's any tricky corners you want to practice with a piano player you can but remember the piano player has got your part there they've got a lot more um, ways of helping you than you have of helping them so it's kind of important you know with a pianist to make sure that you've done your rehearsals beforehand backing tracks are absolutely brilliant because they do help you learn the accompaniment part as well which you do need to know so make sure you get a backing track of it it takes two seconds in a rehearsal just to stick on your phone and record it and record the pianist playing it you know so Backing tracks really help in the run-up to it. If you are using a backing track for the exam, which does happen now, just play it like it's a real accompaniment. You know, go slightly below the volume of the accompaniment, you know, go above the volume of the accompaniment and really work around that accompaniment so that, you know, it does sound like a live performance. And it quite quickly, you can get lost about the fact that actually it's not a real life pianist there. It's actually an accompaniment and it's actually an MP3. So, you know, make sure you work with these accompaniments as much as possible and you know your accompaniment. And directly before we go into the exam, make sure you empty your water out. Empty it into a tissue. You know, you don't want to walk into the exam, meet the examiner, and then just put half a trumpet full of water and dribble all over his carpet. You know, you, he doesn't want to see that. It's like the most weird introduction ever. So make sure that your instrument is empty of water, clean, valves all oiled and working, everything moving correctly, tuned up, ready to go in and ready to play straight away. So we don't want to be showing the examiner what our spit looks like in the first couple of minutes of the exam. And finally, once we finish the exam, it's important to have a quick debrief. Just sit and take a few notes, mark up in your pieces where you didn't think it went quite as well, um, but also just have a think about what did go really well. What was I really good at today? What would I do if I could go in and do it again? What to do differently next time? And make sure you take a note of these things because this is a learning curve, you know? An exam, you don't fail an exam, you learn a lesson. You know, if you go into an exam and it doesn't go your way, take the lesson from it. What didn't go your way? What, what was the problem? What was the issue there? Was it because you were playing football two minutes ago before the exam and then you came rushing down, you had a massive run through the piece before with a pianist and you went in out of breath, absolutely shattered. Your face was killing because you'd just been running everything and then you're expected to do the best, most calm, lovely, perfect performance, beyond reasonable doubt, and all that stuff. You know, these debriefings are essential so that you do understand what went wrong and what you can do next time to improve it. Thank you so much for listening to this little video clip all about exam prep. I hope there's been some really useful nuggets in there to help you get out through everything. Remember, notes, rhythms, details, deliver it beyond reasonable doubt. Think about that job spec and uh, have a great time. Enjoy the exam. Enjoy playing for the examiner. The examiner will enjoy listening to you and good luck with every exam that you have in the future.